I've not played that for ages. Hello, everyone. Oh, Bruce is here. He's arrived. That's good. Mike isn't here. This is just rude. Stephen says, good evening. evening all from a lovely, sunny and warm Italia. Stephen, we'll have none of that. Don't say that. It's pissing it down in Hampshire. Um, good evening, everybody. How are we? Mike, um, you can move. You can go away. Um, so, <laughs> I don't know where he is. How is everybody feeling? Bruce, how are you feeling today? I was slightly concerned for you after the last podcast. I'm always yeah. ready. You never are. So it was a. It's, I'm wondering how you're feeling today. I feel a bit better. I He's feel, back. I feel all right, actually. I'm. I'm having seen what I saw yesterday. As long as we play every game away from home, I think we'll be fine. That's a load of shit. We've only won one game at home away all season. <laughs> yeah, but we. Yeah, but we. Well, yeah, but it feels like oh, we yeah. haven't won at home. No, we, 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 we do look a lot more solid away from home in, in recent games. How many goals have we considered in the last three away games? I don't know. Well, well I was, haven't, we, haven't we drawn 1-1, one, one, drawn 0-0 nil, nil, and 1-1-0? One, one, nil? Maybe. Is that, our, is that our last three away games? You three tell nil. me. You're the, nil, you're the nil, man nil. with the stats. No, well, no, I'm, that's just from memory. that, that we, We've not played that many away since Salford, have we? Is that right? Yeah, so, that's true. So, we've conceded two goals in our last and picked up when we've, when we've picked up five points. So I would say compared to our home record, we, last three games, what's that? 84 goals? Then, you know, that's pretty good. That's, pre- that's pretty good, I would say. No, actually, in all seriousness, it was it was what it needed to be. And I thought we played OK. We could have lost it. It was typical town, wasn't it? We could have lost it at the end, but then should have won it. And a draw was probably a fair result, but we could have just done it. If we'd have put another goal in in the first half, I think it, it might have been a different story. But uh, no, I'm 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 quietly confident. I think like somebody, I was reading on uh, Facebook earlier, somebody posted that, and it's somebody who has been highly critical in recent weeks, understandably so, that you can't say they're not playing for the, each other and the manager because what one thing they did do yesterday, all of them was put in a shift. Yeah, that was nice to see. But before we get into the weeds, um, and that's my fault because I led you down that path. Um, Henry's back. How are you? In a Hello. Yes, all Where... well. About as good as could be expected. I've been uh, trying my hardest to avoid the Grimsby games through through work travel. But uh, yeah, a lot to unpack, I think, since I last joined the show. Are you still and, in France? Um, no, um, I was, uh, I'm back there tomorrow. Oh, what a what a terrible what life you lead. Does that mean you're gonna start talking about the Southampton game? Uh well yeah, I can do if I want to cheer. We've got, we've got a one pick we've got a one pick. Right, okay, I'll just mute Alex while Henry uh, chats. <laughs> well, I think um I think just following on from Bruce, I think that was one of my main takeaways from yesterday watching it was uh, they clearly put a shift in, so he's not lost the dressing room in that sense he got a response out of them um effort wise uh for the, but... for the love of god don't make me do another hour and a half in the changing room <laughs> just, <laughs> just fear, fear of an hour long team talk um but i i think you can almost spin it in two ways there i mean they looked on their ass after 30 minutes and i'm not sure that's a good thing no. You know, I, I mean, the pitch the pitch was awful. Clearly, not great conditions. It was a not a classic game of football. But yes, they they clearly put a shift in. But the flip side to me is they also looked like they were blowing out their asses a little bit. But you know, I think based on how it went last week at home, you would take a point all day in that situation. Really, we've we've lost our chatting shit. Uh, thing i don't know what's going on we've gone all professional and guardian like did everyone have a nice week let's start there i uh i met with john Gurlis, who's been on the pod before um at some trade association event which was quite fun uh we literally talked about town for an hour and a half um <laughs> which i assume i wasn't there for um mike how are you how's everything your end i'm good mate living the dream how are you yeah i'm all right i'm good i'm not it's a bit wet I, down I, here though isn't it I didn't know why my face looked weird earlier, but for some reason it has like an automated touch-up thing. Do you guys have that as well? Have you put it on? Look, if you go on settings, if you guys click settings and then go onto your camera, you can properly like do yourself up. Look, there we go. Like proper Instagram. I've got no stubble or anything. 
It's weird. I don't like it. I'm going to go back. I'm going back to normal. Okay. Apparently, yeah. looks exactly. <laughs> looks exactly. That's why you know you can't touch me up. I'm too perfect. That's it. Is that is that Alex's way of saying he's had Botox? I've not, Ash. No. I'll tell you what, I want to watch the TV show which said this guy had it in his palm of his hand and he said, right, this pile of uh, chemicals is enough to kill everybody in in the world. And it was Botox, basically. It's diluted so much. You know, this isn't all entertainment. Some of it's, you know, education. Um, Bruce, you got anything to sell before we go on to the, the actual football stuff? No, all, all quiet at the moment, mate. I'm all sold. I'm all sold out. That's good to know. All sold out. All the laptops have gone. Um, Grimbo is saying Bahrain Grand Prix is on at the same time Saturday as Grimsby v Forest Green. Well, that's a shame for the Bahrain Grand Prix, isn't it? Because who needs to see Max Verstappen go round and lap everybody? Um, I've got a, I've got a ski electrics that I can do the same thing with. Yeah, exactly. Uh, let's have a look, see who's saying hi. Evening, Daniel. How are you? Evening, Square Eyes. I love that opening. Puts a smile on my face. I like that one as well. well I'll do some updating on it. Uh, Jack right. Brown, evening. That Pardon? That that opening is a cracker. The only reason you like that opening is because of your agricultural background and you get to see a yeah, bit Yeah, well, wheat. you got the wrong crop on there now. I'm all about the barley. <laughs> how are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, go. If I'll lend you the drone. If you can do some sort of, you know, sweeping vistas of barley. In, 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 you know, the oh, we've got loads of work. I'll just find a video. Yeah, there we go. Uh, much improved, says Mark. Comes from Saturday, but then again, that wasn't difficult. I mean, I've taken shits that were an improved performance on Saturday last week. That's what, um, most, that's, that's what most town fans seem to be doing on social media. They're like, give with one hand, and then they sort of take with the other. It's like nobody can quite pay them a compliment, a full compliment yet. We're, we're, we're working towards it. We'll see how Saturday goes, and then we'll see, <laughs> we'll see what the compliments are. It's like, it's like, oh, yeah. That was a bit better, but we have been fucking shit, haven't we? You know what I mean? It's like, it's like, yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought that so and so played well, but he's been shit all season. But you that's know, that's like, that's human nature, isn't it? How many times do you like when I'm at work? Well done, Alex. That was really good. It was better than the last thing you did, wasn't it? <laughs> that's basically what I get. Yeah, yeah, true. Well, maybe, maybe you you do work at your work, though. I don't really, you know, I try not to. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, I uh, no. Let's see, let's see what happens next Sunday, shall we? Because that, that that'll either be that'll either be happy or bloody sad, won't it? Next Saturday, I next don't... Sunday, next Sunday's pod's going to be one way or the other, in it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so Ash, yeah, yeah Ash, Tom, uh, blah blah blah. Brooke is uh, Daniel Lewis wants to know if Bruce is drinking milk. Grimbo can't go through another relegation to non-league. N- neither can we. Let's face it. But if we get there, we'll all do it together. All right. And if you look at the teams in non-league nowadays, they're all pretty shit. So, you know, it might not take 11 years to get out. I've bought some Bruce's... pub snacks. What's that? Maisie's made some rocky road for us all. Oh, what? Charlie hasn't got to that level yet. He's not yeah. bothered. That looks nice. Yeah. Shall I tell you what? Yeah. I... Henry's here, so at least I can talk to him about it. I love Lakin's pasties. I love a Lakin's pasty. No, it's all about pop things in the no, Lakin's is better. <laughs> and I went last time I was up. I went Pop, and they, they didn't have any. Parkinson's. No, they don't. <laughs> is that the one in Lakin's, Lake, 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 Lakin's is for the tourists, mate. <laughs> I thought you were going to say the tourists. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's it. Which is why it's the busiest shop in Louth. Um, Bruce, are you drinking milk or is that, you know, what well, we've got coconut going on? No, it's milk. Milk. <laughs> It's good for your teeth, it's isn't nearly it? Ti- it's nearly time. It's nearly time for his bedtime. I've drunk, I've uh, drunk loads of milk. Never had a fill-in, mate. 84 ne- years old and I've never had a fill-in. Oh, lovely. Uh, he's never been to the dentist, so that's probably why. Uh, Josh... <laughs> Josh says, not even selling his soul. I don't know what that one is, Joss. I'm sorry. Uh, Richard Young, evening, lads. Alex, your skin is glowing. Thank you very much. It's the radiation, uh, Richard. Um Andrew Niles, sorry I'm late. Did I miss anything? I played that wonderful video. Uh, Paul Bevan, evening, evening, HC Storms. Do you think we will sign Cartwright permanently? I don't know. We can get into that because I thought he got a bit of a raw deal of it yesterday. Uh, HC Storm has always fancied Dorking away. It's not far. Burkett, short crust pasty, pasty, says um, pasty, says Richard Young. Richard, I'll let you into a secret. My dad used to own Burkitt's on Lambert Road. 
Um, and uh, every Sunday, it's one of my sort of, you know, core memories of going to going to Burkitt's on Lambert Road and um, sitting there eating pasties and pork pies and watching Football Italia. It was amazing. Uh, and apparently there was a ghost. I thought, you were going to, I thought you were going to tell him for a minute then that you got his meat from the Chinese next door. There wasn't a Chinese. There was a. I want. I want to say Arkwright, but it's not that. We've got some uh, cats. That's, we've got some cat. Uh, Lakins is the one. Says Ash. I'm right. I am right. I know that Henry doesn't know anything. He's from Oldham, for Christ's sake. Um, that shop shut down now, isn't it, Henry? Where I used to work. What the old farm shop? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's been shut for about. 15 years, I reckon. Oh, was it? <laughs> Probably like at least time. 10. At least 10, yeah. I got told off like a couple of years ago when I um, I forgot that Ryby Square had changed Bruce. So I was trying to drive around and around the back and I ended up going into the docks. And I, I, bet you, I, bet, I bet you I bet you were. <laughs> yeah, oh, I haven't changed know, that yeah. much, mate. Apparently, no, I couldn't get onto. I couldn't get onto the flyover, and I had to go through the bloody dock office or whatever it is. And the bloke was like, "It's been like that for fifteen years. You're pulling me legs." So like, why would I want to go on the docks that much? Uh, but there we are. Lakin's pisses on pocket. I didn't know this was going to be the biggest contention of the evening. Uh- <laughs> I tell you what, the the quality of listener has really gone downhill on this podcast, Alex. Honestly, <laughs> disappointing. Isn't, isn't there another bakery in Louth? It's about thirty. <laughs> yeah, you can you can get you can you can get quite fat quite quickly in Louth with the pubs and the and the cheese shops and the butchers. Um, yeah. Anything else anybody wants to add before we actually talk about football, Mike? Anything down here apart from it being soaking wet? No, it's cold and it's wet. I think that's about it, all that's going eating, off down here. Eating is on in here. Although I did um, see, I did see something on one of the local sites about that Steve Morrison kicking off with uh, one of the reporters. I don't know if you guys saw it. The well, you and Simon in cahoots because he says uh, dodged a bullet with Morrison. What a fruit loop! I didn't think it was that bad an interview, was it? He just got a bit shirty. Yeah, but I thought it was a bit fruit loopy. Uh, did anyone else hear it? He got a bit narky with somebody. Are we talking like Michael Jolly level narky or I not think quite, it was not slightly quite. less, yeah. I think there was fifty percent less fucks in it. <laughs> Sounds like my uni days. Um, <laughs> um yeah, it was oh he just got a little bit shirty. Wasn't it wasn't it to do with the penalty taker? Someone grabbed the ball off someone and whatever and asked Yeah, but then it. then he said, Can you do anything to stop conceding goals? And he went, Yeah, stop conceding goals. I was like, Come on, stop being a dick. Uh, I'll be honest. I think you know we're one home game away from Artel giving the same same answer. <laughs> oh, he's, he's not as bad. Um, yeah. Well, then we will uh, start unless there is any AOB, uh, and we'll uh, we'll see you in thirty seconds. Open wide for some soccer. And now the shipping forecast issued by the Met Office on behalf of the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency at 1130. Go! At 1130. I don't think I've ever wanted to be on a stand more than my life around there. They're going crazy. Yeah, they got a penalty here. They've been fish flying about her. There's no tomorrow. What a magnificent piece of football! A really, really good job. You can't make the strength of that. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the DN35 podcast. So glad to have you with us, whether you listen live or on 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 podcast. Um, we need to start, which seems to be far too often nowadays, uh, to obviously talk about the death, sad death of Chris Nichol, who played for town in the uh, early 80s, played 70 games for us, uh, won the League Cup twice with Aston Villa. Uh, sadly, before mine, and I would imagine Henry Mike's time, Bruce, I imagine, has at least 30 copies of, you know, Wonderful tackles and passes that he's got somewhere, um, but I don't. I don't, really... mate. I don't know. He was before my time. Um, I started going in eighty eight, and he he left in eighty five. 
Um, but yeah, like you say, it just what a shit, what a shit 2024 we've had so far. You know, as a club for on and off the pitch, just with the, you know, the sadness and the what you know what's gone on. But yeah, obviously, I don't think it's massively unexpected. He's he's been reported for a, a while that he's been suffering with dementia, um, and. Yeah, another player that when you look on social media, loved by his other clubs, as you say, successful at Villa. Um, he was a bit like, I guess, to us, sort of, that didn't see him, He was a, it was a bit like sort of Futcher when he came, but at a higher level, a guy with plenty of experience, with a good pedigree. Um, and obviously, by the sound of it, built up a, a brilliant rapport um, with Kev Moore. I mean, you know, that must have been some... He was Northern Irish international, played over 50 times for Northern Ireland. Um, so he must have been some player. And like I say, we know what, you know, from the stories we've been told, what, what a player Kev Moore was. Um, and that first season that he was here was the club's best finish since they were relegated from the first division. They finished fifth in 83, 84. So that says a lot about, you know, a lot about him as, as well. But yeah, two seasons with Town and another, another sad sort of way to start a Sunday, isn't it? Yeah, sadly so. Uh, but at least it's a little bit about brighter than it was, you know, on the pitch with a, a draw against Morecambe. Andrew Niles, just before we move on, says, I miss the time when top players would drop down a level at the end of their career. Rest in peace, Chris. Lovely thing to say, Andrew. Um, yeah, so we've at least, you know, got a point on the road. And, you know, are we all getting out our HMS Pistol League pitches now or or, or, or what? Is it, you know... Mike, what were your th- overriding thoughts on a game up in Windy Windy Morecambe? Was it windy? Well, it, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, it was all right in Bordeaux where I was. Nice still. Um, it's one of the. I wasn't sure immediately after how I felt about it, and reflecting back on it last night and today, I think it is as Bruce said earlier, or, or, or um, Henry said earlier. Um, it, it's a place you'd go to and take a point all day long. Um, for me, I mean, I had my say last week about Artel, but I also said last week that once you've sort of come to that opinion, you don't have to keep banging on about it. And if the owners are going to stick with him, they're going to stick with him. So um, it was good to see there had been a point of difference or there'd been some understanding during the week of of what we're going to need to do to actually get out of this. Um, we were definitely a lot more pragmatic. We changed the formation. There was no playing silly balls to split centre backs. The ball was going in the channel. Um and we weren't pratting about with it in the middle of the park where we're just going to get pressed and picked off. So um we were a lot harder to beat. Um I think the the system suited us as well. Um I think we could get back into some decent defensive shape, but we also got up the pitch when we needed to. Um so going forward, um if you forget the last last six or seven games, you would think that's that's a performance and that's a team you think is going to pick up some some results. I mean we we, were, we should have won that, you know, right at the end. You know, you've got Gav with a chance and you've got a few one-on-ones and a few, you know, it's just where you need that pass at the right time to set somebody in. But um, I, I must say halfway through that second half when they had the spell of about six or seven corners, I, you, it's just panic stations, isn't it? I mean, as much as we've changed what we're doing, whenever the ball's near our bo- box, chaos usually ensues and panic. Um, so hopefully if they can stop conceding three, four and five, they can start to feel a little bit more, um, a little more, yeah, comfortable in defending the box. But um, yeah, I think it was a, it was a good, good point. Bruce, was it revenge? Was this result revenge on me putting a tenner against town to win uh, and putting, you know, tenner on Morecambe to win? I thought about doing that. Not. I got, but bo- me feel not, like it, but not particularly yesterday, but, no, that's that does serve you right. You know, you, you, I don't want to bet. I, I try not to bet on town either way if I can help it. Oh, but, Bruce, so, you should. I think, hopefully, you did it in two thousand and nine, right? Didn't you? I made a small fortune. No, I spent too much that season going to the games. Twenty five. I was twenty five. Twenty five games without a win. Two thousand and nine, ten, when we got relegated. Yeah. I don't know. If I've, I've probably told you before. It was my most prolific season ever because I always felt that they needed me. And that's, you know, when, but then you hear later on about how on the piss they were and all that sort of shit. And, but yeah, I, I, if town are going along nicely, I, I don't have the same. I sometimes I go more when they're struggling. Um, I don't know why. It's just that's that's the way we all have our own different things, don't we? But um, What a lovely but, gesture. Yeah. yeah. 
So I was there. I was there in your in your now hometown when Adam Proudlock launched his missile towards space. Um, yeah, hit my uh, hit my roof. Yeah, <laughs> you, that, you, you, you were, I'm assuming you weren't down there then. No, I wasn't. No, I was. I was still up. I was still up north. I was had a season ticket. I, was, everything. Was 60, 60, I sat 60, next 60, to my friend 60. Henry. Yeah, well, I was that game. Hang on, we'll range it like it was when it used to be in the. If you're looking at the low thing, that's how it would look. I remember being on Terry's bus and um, uh, the coach on the way home. It, I think the players' coach was overtaking Terry's coach, and Adam Proudlock was in the window nearest. And as he was slowly going past, and he was just sort of like this, basically at the window. That's my main memory from the game. <laughs> I think once, once I think I did, and Henry, you probably said it a load of times. I think I made someone move, so I got four gingers in a row, like Ginger Connect Four, uh, with Henry. I got someone to move at the front. <laughs> I remember you chirping about it, but I don't remember it happening. Oh, that's a shame. Maybe I've <laughs> changed it in my memory. But that, that season was well boring, and that's what we were doing. <laughs> but actually, though, just I, I was thinking today, just going back to that season. Oh, he's eating food. That's why his camera's off. Sorry, Bruce. <laughs> no, you're right. Going back to that season, though, I think Saturday, I know ultimately we weren't successful that season, but by the time that the big games came, we were down in the bottom two, trying to get out of them. But I think Saturday's going to be our barnet. How do you mean, Arbani? What, what, when we won 2-0? When we won 2-0, when Hudson scored at the death and there was a pitch invasion and nearly, and well, there was, and it, went, and it was just like, but I mean, obviously, that was much later in the season. But I think on Saturday, last two home games that we've been beaten, we've had Donny, we've had the, you know, we've had the big, the big Osmond sold out with 1,200. Well, no, I think Don, somebody only bought 800, Stockport only bought 800, I think. But they've yeah, been pretty full. It, it, it's been pretty full. Um, and, there's, and they've created a hell of an atmosphere. Well, we've got no excuse on Saturday as fans not to dominate that atmosphere and make it intimidating for Forest Green because, I mean, they're going to bring 75 in the corner. 180 is their average this season, and they took no, 69 bring, to the same amount they took to Wembley. Yeah, 12. Maybe yeah. we should just leave them on their bus. Just park them in front of the pontoon on the bus. Don't even have to get out, or maybe we just give them at Menemies for the week, and then we just make it an entire home area. But they need to flog those tickets, don't they, Bruce? You know, give them to all and sundry. Who cares? Pack the park, get some noise going, get the lads who get the drum in, get everything I else the, in. I think the atmosphere will be good. I think I think the fact that we, we just didn't we just didn't need to lose yesterday, and the fact that we're going into into this game, we found you know we've we've found a way of like like Mike said, we found a way of playing. Um, and I, I think that I think that the fans will be right up for it. And I just, I, I hope that that between the players and the fans, between us, we can, you know, we can do enough to because I, I, I don't think we're more than, you know, you you get a result on Saturday, you beat them Saturday, and they've lost at home midweek or picked up a point midweek. Suddenly you're talking what seven points, and we've got we're going to have what a couple of games in hand. You know, it's like it's like, you know, suddenly that that breeds. We go to Wimbledon. I come down next week on the piss for the day in London with you lads, and you know, we we, we go and storm Wimbledon, and and we're safe by we're safe by Easter. Well, I was I was quite negative. I did the fishy relegation predictor, which I think it's about right now. You can do it, and um, I had us winning one game now between now and the end of the season. We still stayed up, um, you know. You can shake your head. I'm being realistic. Being realistic. One game. Right, really right. Okay, realistic then. Me and you now. I will give you a bonus game for two. I bet you we win more than two games between now and the end of the season, tenor. Well, I mean, I'm happy to have that. That's fine if you know, if it means we stay up. No, but you no, you if, if you, you genuinely think we're going to win one game between now and the end of the season. What did I have? I put I put it on WhatsApp, didn't I? Um, yeah, so we won I the next, us... we won the next game, and then we didn't win again between now and April. Yeah, so I had us beating Forest Green, drawing with Sutton, drawing with Bradford, drawing with Newport, drawing with Colchester, and drawing with Swindon, and the rest were losses. Forty three points, I think it ended on on. Right, so we're on how many points now? Uh... 30, 30, is it? Less than that. 30 29, 31. isn't it? 
Right, so we're going to win through. That's 32. So we're going to draw 11 games. That's about right, isn't it? We've drawn that so already. Basically, so basically, I'm not being funny, but you sat on the fence in your predictions, really, didn't you? Yeah, I am not yeah, having... I am, no, You're going to win a fortune. If you, put that on, if you, you put that on at the bookies. You put that on at the bookies. <laughs> you'll be a fucking millionaire if that comes in. I'm not having this. I'm not having this from You've Mr. Fence the post You've over there. Dro- Mr. Fence got left, post mate? over here in Bruce. Uh, I'm uh, not uh, having this. A Hang point on, that mate, we mute him. mute him a minute. A, a point that we all do do whenever we're in this situation, we can and I'm sure at some stage this season we'll get into the conversation of why we're in this, you know, and how bad that is. What we do have a habit to do is overestimate how many points other teams that are more crap than us are gonna get. You know, because I'll it, be honest, in, the, in all the other relegation seasons, apparently I have not. <laughs> and neither have we. <laughs> no, do you know what I mean? We sometimes turn turn the teams that are in to 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 well beat us when they're not. How many points do you yeah. think we need? I'd ideally, 11. I'd like forty-eight. You think eleven points? That's it. I'm going to see if, if I can we get this. if if we if we win on Saturday, I think we need eleven months of fourteen. But if we win on Saturday, two games in hand and seven point gap, I think I think you're asking them to do eighteen points. Yeah, that's quite. A, that is quite a tough ask, but I just don't. I, it just seems such a little amount considering we've got a third of the season still to go, doesn't it? Yeah, but how many have they? How many have they racked up now? Uh, I don't know. I haven't got the league table in front of me. For reference, Hartlepool went down on forty-three points last season. Well, they're on twenty-two. So, we're on twenty-two. They were twenty-two. One of them was on twenty-two, weren't they? Are they on? Are they on twenty-five and twenty-six now? That would. That's about right, isn't it, Mike? I think. Yeah. I think Sutton will be on 25, won't they? And Forest Green are on 26. So we, we, I, think we're on, I, th- I do think we're on 30 now, the, but I've not the, got the table in front of me. That would sound before, about, sound the about right. The year before, Oldham went down on, um, I think, 38, but the next highest team was on 44. So I think you've got to be looking at at least 43 points. Well, here's the... I did some actual genu- genuine work this afternoon while Leanne was watching Drive to Survive. Um, and that's the running between now and the end of the season. I've discounted everybody else. Like, I think Donny and Salford are safe. Are you gents in agreement on that? They're sort of eight points yeah. clear of us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so then it's between four of us. Colchester, Mar- uh, you know, Colchester has said March because I was reading the fucking months. Colchester, Town, Forest Green, and Sutton. And this is, a, this is the list of teams we've got to play. I've, what I've tried to do is put their current positions on there so we know what quality of opposition we've all got to face. So Blue is a, our fellow relegation rivals. We're the only team that has to play all of them uh, between now and the end of the season. Uh, the rest are, you know, playing. Green is playing for pride. This is really good if you listen on a podcast. Uh, yellow, outside chance of uh, the playoffs, which is actually a pretty decent chance because it's quite tight up at the top. The orange ones are the ones in the playoffs or a point or so off it, and then everyone else is in automatic spots. So you're looking at that. Our run after March is slightly better. If if you look at Forest Green after April, they've got crew... Yeah. MK Dons, Mansfield, Rex, and Morecambe, Notts County. I said this to, to and you missed dad. and you missed Stockport out there as well. Yeah, you was Stockport in in March. So they've got they've they've got such a run in, you know. And you you can't rely on that. But if you look in the last three or four games of the season, you're going to fancy yourself with the games we've got compared to the games they've got. And you've just got to look at them where you're looking at the ones in April, where currently Crawley they could be well out of the promotion races by then. They might not be, you know, I've still got that idea of Danilo Orsi sending us down. Swindon will have finished playing. Then we've got Colchester. That Colchester game on on my birthday is going to absolutely ruin the day for me. Um where we I, play. I think them. if you look at that, if you beat if you beat the three around us in the run in, yeah. You're sort of most of the way there to the sort of forty three point mark by that point. So that's may actually made me feel a lot better. Assuming that we get nine points out of those games, but yeah, Jack Simpson says, given our home form, would we take a draw next week? I absolutely would not. If these lot can't beat them, then they're bottle drops. I, I think That's there's enough of the season way. left to not to not be worried. It's it's something that if you the the difference between a loss and a draw, I think are not are not as big as how much a win would be. So if it's you know one one in the 85th minute, I'm wanting I'm wanting us pushing forward for the win because I think there's enough of the season left. What another 13 games where it's not it's not terminal, 
but the benefit of getting those seven points ahead and two games two games in hand would be psychologically for Forest Green would be a big a big issue and psychologically for our team as well. I could see us dropping into the relegation zone between now and the end of the season, but not getting relegated because we've got a couple of tough games coming up with Franchise, Gillingham, Wrexham and Barrow. Um, you know, so I can understand that if we don't get much from them and then um, coming into April, you know, in that relegation zone, but within touching distance of Forest Green. And then after the Stockport game, it's starting to turn around. Bruce, now you've seen that. Have you got any thoughts on it as well? Mm. No, I think you've pretty much covered it, mate. To be honest, I've, I've, like you said, I, I, I think, I just think Saturday's a big game, and like, like I said earlier, and I, uh, I think whether it's me being unusually optimistic, but I think we'll win on Saturday. Well, you think we'll win on think- Saturday, and if you and if you think we're not going to win any more games all season, then, <laughs> then, it, then it's then it's nailed on. I'd get you get your mortgage on it, Mike. Look, I just think, you know, we've got to win that. And I think that's by hook or by crook. I'm saying that, you know, people in the pontoon and, you know, who's going to sit in the Osman, you need to bring footballs in and keep them under your seat. So if they ever get on a break, throw those balls on and stop there and, you know, get the game stopped. stopped. This is hook by crook sort of stuff, isn't it, Bruce? Get that big wall of speakers again in the corner next to the pontoon. We do need that you, sort lads, of thing. you lads up from Bordeaux. You can't do fuck all sat at home. Um, here. Well, but well, lots yeah. of it. People, come and support people... them. It's a big game. Oh, if you I will be. I will be very well, soon. Saturday's. No, I think Saturday's the last game I miss for about a month. Actually, that's postponements incoming. Then, isn't it? <laughs> you'll be like. You'll be like when uh, what's his name? The guy that flew over. On, what's one of the club, one of the one of the big club, well, yeah, California. He's missed a couple, hasn't he? Or yeah, uh, ben. I'm at the oh, Andersons see. as well. Missed a few. What are you doing next Tuesday? I know we're, we're darting about a bit, Alex. So a week on Tuesday, sorry. Are you um, are you are you joining us at the at the afternoon for Wimbledon? No, it's Leanne's birthday. I've already said this. Did you? Oh, birthday. yeah. You, sorry, you can't make it. Can't. Well, yeah, you, you, she's birthday. a birthday every year. I don't come down all the time. No, that's true. That's true. That's very true. But you know, I expect to see you at most of the Southern games anyway. But for us Southern Mariners, it's get, we're going to be playing a pivotal part. None of this slagging off as usual, Bruce, about our atmosphere and the like. We've got Gillingham, we've got Sutton, AFC, Wimbledon, Crawley, all the glamorous places. I'll um I'll drop you a message, Bruce, because I'm meeting up with a few people in the afternoon, so we'll um we'll have a chat. But one thing I wanted to say about yesterday, how many injuries and bloody illnesses have we got? Yeah, that's a point. And and that's one of the reasons why this I guess the team looked a bit different. I thought, yeah, we should really talk about the game because I thought Woods was great. And I think Carl trying to got a... gently put us. Back yeah, there. please do, mate. I, <laughs> I thought, thought that saved by Car- I thought that saved by Cartwright was outstanding in the second cracking. Half. Yeah, and I think he was a bit harshly done by by the you know he got a hand to the ball when it came across, and yeah, he could have gathered it, I guess, but um, he still got he still got a, something to it, and then it came off the player. He didn't really seem to have a bloody clue what was going on. The only thing was that when that goal went in, it was a, another sort of easy goal wasn't it they didn't have to do a lot that was my that was my my complaint with that but then you look at our goal and we'd have been going we'd have been apoplectic if that had bloody been us defending did you see it there was just danny rose was just still on the edge of the six yard box on his own and about was, three miles with a space didn't he there was, there was not a player within five yards of him in either direction it was mental <laughs> they, they just the two center halves just sort of pointed at each other i don't know whether they were waiting for one of our goal kicks or something from their keeper before it had gone out or what but yeah, they just Jesus Christ! If we'd have let that in, bloody hell! It was that was far worse than the goal we conceded. But we were really yeah. crisp in the opening in the opening exchanges. I, I thought it was, uh, and I thought at the end know, of the game we were pretty good as well. Hmm. That turn that Harry Woods made, he, he did a wonderful turn on the edge of the box, and then uh, admittedly he did shank it, but it was a yeah. wonderful turn. And every time I kept looking up. He was just seemed to be turning and, and running at their defence. I thought he, you know he was a great addition. I, I, I think I'm referring tight. to he, Andrews. I think he should have yeah. had the free kick at the end because uh, yeah. I don't know what East was doing, putting it on the keeper's side. But he was I mean, trying to beat the keeper, wasn't he? At the near side, like mental. It was bizarre. I don't know what he was trying to do, but I don't know. Wood can he seems like he can hit a ball. So next time, I thought the, I thought the, I thought the Star Wars lad grew into the game as well. He got he got better as the game went on, didn't he? Okay, he, he, ran at, he, he ran at he ran at them a few times in the second half. It was it was the um. Who's the Star Wars lad? A big Obi 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 Wan 
Kenobi or whatever he's called. Okay, Obi, fine. Obi, right. Obi, Obi, yeah. What, what is it? Obiquu. Obiquu. Is, is uh, it Josh Obiquu. HC Stormer says, thought Wood was great yesterday, but God, was he awful against Tramay? I really hope it was just him adjusting to the league. I hope so too, because if so, I think we've got a decent midfielder. Andrews, again, I failed to, you know, failed to reach a level that I think West Brom would be happy with when he goes back. Um, but there was quite a few changes. And the rumours are that Vernon, who was out yesterday, might be out for a while and he might have, you know, you know, hurt something again muscularly. So hopefully that's not true. And that's just evil words on the grapevine. Yeah, somebody was saying hamstring, wasn't there? I think the, the the thing with Wood is the game really suits him when it starts to open up. And towards the end, both teams, I think, were, you know, we'd made a tactical change and got back on top of them because there was a period in the middle of the game where they were on top. Uh, and then towards the last 50, 10, 15 minutes, the game opened up a bit. And he, with time and space on the ball to, to, to move it forward and, and run with it, I think he looks good. Less convinced from the evidence I've seen against Tranmere that he's, that is shown enough to show he can be in there in the midfield when it's when it's not quite so open. Um, but definitely, if you're you know if you're ten fifteen minutes left and the game's getting stretched, you can um, you can have a bring him in. Link. I thought the midfield is no. The mid... What? I had a late great link then. Don't worry about it. It wasn't important. Go, Bruce. Sorry. Um, I could see you waving your arms about, but I thought you maybe you farted and you were just trying to disperse it. Um, no, I'll do that. The, the uh... <laughs> No, I thought that the midfield actually was 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 better yesterday. No matter who we we played, I thought I thought Clifton. We've we've been quite critical of of, of Harry on the pod um, of of his his levels. He's not at the levels that he he's been at. Um, and I thought yesterday he had a really good game. And I thought that Hollahan, you know, he, he he was devastated by that miss at the end. Um, but I thought he had a he had a good game, and he gives us a bit of a composure on the ball. There was. There was a little incident in the second half where he had a man or a couple of players coming towards him, and he he just sort of sidestepped them in front of the dugout with just sort of dropped his shoulder and went the other way, and just that little bit of composure on the ball that that we've been talking about, and people have been you know bigging up Alex Hunt for what he, what he could do, um, and funnily enough, did you see the tweet that somebody had put out about how they reckon that Alex Hunt's debut might have go down as one of the worst in York's history or something? Uh, just on I thought that note. was. I thought that was in our WhatsApp group and not on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> I think somebody messages us oh, well. that. Oh, well, I saw it. Anyway, anyway, yeah. Well, they're obviously, they're obviously talking about it in Fox York sake. anyway. <laughs> Delete. But, uh, but, yeah. But, no, I thought the midfield was a lot better yesterday and we looked a lot more solid. And I think and I think and hope now that we've found that formation and, and all that, you know, we've found a way of, of staying in games, which is the key, isn't it? You know, you don't want to be... 2-0 down after 5, 8 and 14 minutes and otherwise you've got a real bloody uphill challenge. And it's, here. Yeah, and it's about, in... you know... Sorry, Alex. And it's about um, it's about building, isn't it? Hurst used to talk about it as well, about, you know, the, the draws are still, you know, not defeated. And it's these players are obviously so low on confidence, not just because we're shouting you're really shit at them, but um, uh, it's also to do with the, the performances they're putting in. And, you know, a draw against a, a, a promotion chasing Morecambe is a, is a good point to have. And then, you know, you can get you can get that win, even if it just goes off somebody's arse in the last minute against Forest Green. And then all of a sudden, you know, two games on the bounce, you know, no goals conceded, you know, four points looking a bit rosier, isn't it? And then before you know, I mean, you can get, there is a, there is a, there is a not unlikely scenario that none of this is an issue come the end of March, where we could be, you know, above Colchester, even above Donny and even above, you know, Salford or someone, if they've hit a bad run of form. And, you know, we're, 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 we're just looking at trying to get into that pack again, where you can go, but you know, time is running out on that sort of stuff. The the main issue I I've had recently we discussed last week was the the conceding of goals. Now if we can if we can get somewhere near conceding none or one in a game, I'm very confident we're going to score one, two, or three. Um, so if we've if we've s- sort of fixed that to some extent and we continue to fix that by being a bit more pragmatic, I still think we'll score goals. Um, so that was the biggest part for me yesterday, seeing that change because if we kept playing the way we'd been playing, we'd have we'd have lost that game comfortably. So just playing devil's advocate for a minute, because like last week the mood was very different. And I think it is interesting. Like we try and be objective, but I think all football fans can be quite fickle. Um, but 
say we go into Saturday, change the shape back, and we lose, where do we go from there? It, it you know, it, it, it depends, really. I mean, what, what I said last week and I said during the week is if you reach an opinion like I have about Artel, I'm not going to keep banging on about it. And the minimum, if the ownership was sticking with him, the minimum was we saw a change, you know. So if we do continue to to keep playing a more pragmatic style, then I'm fine with that. But if we don't learn the lessons of the last 10 games where we've been shocking and then we revert back to type, you, you just can't do that. So for me, I'm more optimistic because we've got a decent point away from home against a good side. But we've also shown that that point of difference where we, we've taken some learning and we've changed and adopted and we've s- seemed to be looking to try and eradicate the biggest problem I had with with what we were doing. Yeah, I think the thing for me that will be interesting on Saturday is were we forced into that change? Because like we said, we've had a lot of illness, a lot of injuries, all of that, you know, I can't remember the exact number, but a lot of players unavailable. And Mm. so if some of those are back on Saturday, I think it'll be very interesting to see what does he do? Does he stick with what he was doing before and revert back because he feels like he's got the players back? Or have we actually stumbled into something that might get us through to the summer? So for me, on our tell, because I've not been on the pod sort of whilst he's been here, really, I think that is going to be really quite an interesting um, thing to see, really. It, I, if, I, we get, I, if we get if we get if we get for one, I want him gone. <laughs> I do think if you if you listen to the the interviews um, with Stockwood before the game and the interview with Artel after the game, there's definitely been a bit of an inquest and a bit of a change this week. So I don't think it's circumstances dictate this how we're playing. There's been a lot of talk about from Stockwood about understanding, you know, stopping the goals at the back end. There's been a clear the air meeting and the coaches have had a clear the meet uh, the clear the air meeting. By the way, why why the coaches need to clear the air meeting starts to worry me. Um, but there's definitely been work this week that they've spoken about that I think has probably led to this more pragmatic understanding of we can't be as open as we have been. So I'd be, I'd, be, I'd be amazed, amazed if he changed back. I can't see if anyone's unmuted, but Jack says, uh, I've been critical of him, uh, but given our, give, but give, must give Artel credit. He made a triple, triple substitution yesterday that changed the game. Uh, Mark Walters wants to touch on the refereeing performance, which is one of the you know, one of the worst for a while. Jekyll and Hyde refereeing performance needs mentioned for the first half. I turned on to my dad and said, it's nice to have a decent ref. I didn't know what happened in the tunnel, but he came out a different man. Maybe he had the same uh, team talk that uh, maybe joined the team talk. Uh, but um, yeah, he was pretty, missed a pretty obvious penalty. I did have a feeling he, you know, from how that game was going, he was fed up with, because we were, as well as being playing differently, we were doing a bit of shit housing. And it, it got, I, my opinion was he'd had enough of it and he was just begging to give him something. I was hoping to God there wasn't somebody go down in the box because I could just see him blowing for it. Bruce, any thoughts on the game at all? Standout performers, performers that you know might need to be changed next week. No, I, I would be. I don't think. I mean, illness-wise, I don't. Obviously, you don't know, but I, it doesn't sound like. I mean, it, it was interesting, wasn't it, that he played um, Abikwu over his more experienced strikers, um, who have both scored a few goals this season. Um, that was, that was interesting. a bit leggy yesterday, didn't he? Yeah, like I say, I thought that I thought that Bikwu, you know, I would hope that he would try and name as close to that shape. And you know, they've gone out and they've done a job away from home. Now you go home and back it up, don't you? With a with a you know with a performance at home. Um, so I would I would hope that we go for what Mike's been talking about rather than Henry's sort of hypothetical question that what, what will he you know what will he do? Um, so yeah, I I I would I'd like to see a similar similar shape and a similar, you know, because they'll all go in, they'll all go into training tomorrow, won't they, on a, you know, they've got picked up a decent result. It just gives us a, a decent week's training, heads up, you know, let's be positive. And like I say, let's all, you know, let's all go through it together next Saturday and try and um, pick up the three points. Speaking of, you know, let's rewind 10 minutes so I can get that awesome link in. Speaking of people who won't be involved in the middle of the park, Alex Hunt, has left for York. There was, a social, there was a social media uh, meltdown, as you know, town do. Um, I don't think the group in the WhatsApp group were particularly happy. I'm a little bit perplexed by it because I just see it as making us weaker. 
uh, given that he's coming back next year. So it's not in lieu of doing anything in particular. But as you know, Bruce alluded to, he didn't necessarily have an amazing debut at York either. York, who are becoming fast, you know, a tribute band to Grimsby Town. Um, it's um, what what did you make of that, Bruce? Oh, sorry, Mike's unmuted. Sorry. I was just going to, I'll let Bruce go first. I was just going to say, I was way in your link, not the fact Alex Green has gone. Just, just oh, right. A- Alex Hunt, not Alex Green. I'm oh, you're here. Alex Green. Where yeah, you gone? thank you. I'm allowed to stay, uh, though Jason has put a warning on me, um, and then we'll go from there. <laughs> he hasn't. Uh, Bruce, what anyway. did you make of the Hunt's departure for, was it for a, for a month or end of season? End of the season, I think, isn't it? Um, I, I don't it's a really funny one, isn't it? I, I just think that we can all see what he's got, but whatever, for whatever reason, multiple managers are not seeing what they need to see from him. They can't all be wrong. I hope that he comes back and he's a different player. If there's nothing permanent done, we've got him under contract. David Artel's not going to turn around and say, oh, well, he's not coming back next year, is he? He's gone. You know, we'll get rid of him in the summer. He, he can't do that. So that may well just be lip sync um, that, you know, to, to try and keep the player uh, on side. Um, but he's had, he's been in and out, hasn't he? You know, he's given us some great moments. He's that goal at Stockport, the free kick in when he was on loan. But, you know, Wednesday let him go, went on loan to us. Sorry, he came on loan to us, didn't he? Then he went on loan to Oldham. Wasn't didn't have a massive impact there. They although they were sort of struggling. He's had quite a lot of opportunities and time here, and for whatever reason, it's just not happened. I wasn't overly disappointed to see him go, because, like I say, two managers have not found a place for him regularly in their team. So no, I'm I'm not. If he comes back and he does well, brilliant. But if he's if the managers um seeing what they need to win him then let him go and be gone we move on yeah it's it's an interesting one i mean i just to caveat everything i say i i think we're all being very clear about what we think about hunt he's got a lot of talent but he hasn't applied it well enough and i don't think i don't subscribe to the fact he gets a better player when he's on the bench he's he's still the same player the issue i do have is when we're in a, a, a supposed um relegation battle which we are now I don't necessarily think we're in a position where we can be sending players out. You mean, I mean, you know, you see what's just happened this week with injuries and illness. I think you need every, every bit of help you can get. Now, Alex Hunt isn't going to play the next 13 games and and tear it up, but he may have one or two games where he comes in, makes a real difference and wins a couple of points because he's the only player other than maybe Wood that has got that something uh, with the ball. Um, So I'm a little bit questioning why would we? I could understand if you do it at the end of the season or if you do it in a window and replace him. I can't for the life of me see why you would let him go when the window's closed, when you need as as many players as you can get. I would really question that a little bit. I think, you know, you look at his CV now from a career perspective and multiple managers have got nothing out of him. And I've just been going through sort of York press and comments about their game at the weekend uh, you know, there's comments there. They'd be amazed if he starts another game this season. And that's the bottom of the national league. Now, you know, I think there is talent in there, like you said, but talent isn't everything in terms of making a successful footballer. There's a whole load of other traits that you need to to have success, and I don't think he has them, to be honest. And I, it's a real shame. But um, I don't know. I to me, the best manager in terms of getting something out of him would be Hurst. I think the first spell... You expected to see him at Shrewsbury? Well, I don't think you will because I think Hurst's given up on him as well. That was quite clear, wasn't it? Um, I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong, Henry. I'm I'm not changing my opinion of the fact he's he's really disappointing. I'm just saying I don't know what we've gained. You know, I don't know what we gained. Well, we, we've, lost, we've lost, it, we've lost it, the player that we could... It, might, he can focus might on the players that he wants, though, can't it, he? Yeah, he, it, 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 on it the, depends. On the training pitch and stuff, he can bring us a close knit. Sorry, Henry. He, he might want a close knit squad that you know he might want sort of sixteen or seventeen that he's going to have involved, and might as well let him go and play football and somebody pick up a part of his wages. If he's not going to play, why have him here? Hundred percent agree with Bruce on that. And um, 
you know, when times were tough under Hurst, he always, always preached about a close knit squad, a small squad, and a group that are fully committed to it. And, you know, I mean, Alex Hunt's been here for what, 18 months and barely played a game. He's probably not going to be two years if you include the loan, really, don't you? You know, he's not probably, he's probably not going to be the, the most positive character in the dressing room, which is completely understandable on his part. I'm not not knocking him for that. It but... wasn't it wasn't the warmest departure either. I'll see if I can find the tweet. I, I would just say though, on Saturday we had one midfielder on the bench. And this is what I mean in a relegation battle when the window's shut and you can't make any options. If something happened and you needed numbers, I I don't see what we've gained for the sake of letting one player go and your your squad's instantly more close knit. It's it's one player. Well, it depends what impact that player is having on a day-to-day basis. You just—I'm just going to say, for all for all we know, he's he's causing chaos at Cheapside. What what do you think he's doing, Bruce? Do you think he's um you know letting off the fire alarms and stuff like that? Darts. That's all he wants darts, to do is play it's darts. darts. It's all. It's all it's, fuck's sake! Come on, get off! There. Yeah, he keeps beating our tell at darts. Yeah, is that what it is? He's just undermining him. That's the only way he's undermining him. You know, he keeps doing he's, nine he's darts. Luke Little, doesn't he? Thinks he's Luke yeah. Little, doesn't he? Do you think he comes in a Luke Little shirt? Is that what it is? Yeah. He called me Little yeah. Little Hunt. But he basically said, all the best for the rest of the season. I'll be honest. It wasn't necessarily, you know, over. It wasn't an emo- over emotional uh, goodbye, was it? Um, but there we go. The um, the mystery wrapped in an enigma that is Alex Hunt is now on his way to York. Um, a couple of people for it to say. So uh, let's try and move on from him as well, which we already have done apparently. Uh, Ollie Hodson, would Hunt be better with a manager that had arm around him type? Well, maybe Ollie, but he didn't necessarily work under Hurst, did it? Don't think any manager he's played under are that of that type. I think Hurst is, to be perfectly honest. And I think that's why people like to play with him. Taylor Blee says he he may have the ability, but I don't think he will help us win the battle. Can't afford to play risky balls where we are. He's not a bad player, but he hasn't stepped up to League Two. Uh, so we can use him next year, Taylor. Is that what it is? Uh, Mark Walters says uh, Hurst uh, dro- dropped Hunt three times. Oldham dropped Hunt, and now Artel has dropped Hunt uh, and sent him away. It's all you need to know. Has skill, but clearly doesn't know do do anything, and managers don't like him. Uh, doesn't oh sorry does or doesn't do something the managers like. Uh, Richard says, even Corey's loan expires this week. With the injury, surely we'll be seeing him back in the squad. Um, and then sending Hunt away, may free up wages. Artel's got a free agent he wants to bring. Mark, I don't think we're going to be seeing anybody coming in between now and the end of the season, to be perfectly honest. Unless David De Gea wants to come in, um, I'm not sure what it would do. Do you not think he might he might still be looking for a keeper? It would be nice if he did, because I think it is a weakness. And, I, I you know... Cartwright made a brilliant save at the end of the at, at the end, but I think anyone that can push him because both Eastwood and Cartwright, I think their performances have helped put us in this position. And um, if there is somebody, I mean, I would love someone with Macca's, you know, um, you know, ability to make those sort of jaw dropping saves and and win a game win a game on their own. But I don't know where we can find that. I don't think Macca's up to it. <laughs> I mean, I've got, I've got, I've, I've got no against Cartwright, but he's a young lad, you know. And if if he has a couple of bad games, then you know, you you don't need a shaky youngster at the back. So some, you, I, I'm just wondering if whether he wants to bring in somebody with a bit of experience that maybe is not as talented as Cartwright, but is a bit more calming, especially with our back back four, who look like cats on a hot tin roof sometimes when they're defending. What do we do to make Blunder Park bounce? Then, so Forest Green bringing 50 people. Whereabouts, Bruce? Can we put these 50 people? Do we just put them in a in a tiny little corner at the top of the main stand, get them away, and then sell the rest out? PA box. On a, on a TV gantry. Put them on the TV gantry. That's not a bad idea. On the Findus roof for the ones that can't get down there. I think, you know, it's, it's hook or by crook on Saturday, I think. I want to see people throwing a ball on when Forest Green are on a counter-attack. I want to see them, you know, keeping the ball. If we're 1-0 up with five minutes to go, if the ball goes into the crowd, I want to see that ball in the crowd and all the multi balls mysteriously have disappeared. Um, I want I think to see. Ch- I, think Chalky, I think Chalky said we should put them in the ch- in the in the uh, cage. We should do. It's where they belong. They can feel like the free range because put, they don't like. Few, I think it's still terracing in the cage, so we just we'll just put a few. You know, just get them a few. They can bring their own chairs, can't they? Uh, Ollie Hodson suggests absolutely no meatless products sold. So everything must always sell in is Lincolnshire sausages in the away end. That's it. 
you know, a Lincolnshire sausage smoothie, Lincolnshire sausage, you know, chips, beef and onion slices, crisps, beef and onion crisps, <laughs> <laughs> everything we can get. Uh, but I don't. I would be surprised if they bring more than a couple of hundred, and that says, you know, a sad, a sad indictment. I'd work. I'd that. work for free if I could serve Dale Dale Vince a bloody a carvery in McMenamin. Would you, what would you do? Say he's a, would you say he's got a soy latte, but it's not. It's actually full fat milk. <laughs> would you? Would you know? I just I just taking beef and Yorkshire puddings. Yeah, but you'd know it's beef and Yorkshire. Can you puddings, even get soy milk thing. in Grimsby? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone brought some over from Leeds once, and it was thrown in the Humber. You can get milk formula. You can get milk formula. <laughs> so it's still got a, it's still got a security tag on it. Depends where you get it from. Then you get off of some of that Ribby Square. No, I, I saw. Um, well, I used to work on Conver Moor Road, so I saw enough people stealing it. Uh, look the other bloody way, thank you. <laughs> um, what else we got? Uh, if Max, if we had Max in goal, we'd have been in mid table, I think. Uh, it's definitely, definitely the right. It's definitely our Achilles. Is that a joke, Moz? That it's definitely our Achilles heel because I would love a bit of you know calf pain next week. I don't know about you guys, but you know I think we need to do something, and I, I think everyone should bring their flag, bring their flag along, hang it up, make London Park look a bit ho more homely, stick it up. We'll get some uh, flag equipment. I don't know what that means. What's flag equipment? You guys let me drown. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Let's just leave it. I get, leave to, turn the, I get to turn the calendar over this week. Go on, then. Do it now, then. No. No, you've got to wait. You'll have to wait till next week. See who's on it. Well, if we lose to Forest Green, we're definitely going to forget about that as content. So you might as well do it now. So I'll see if it's somebody that's still here. It will not be. <laughs> so we're losing Luke Waterfall, who left this, this month. Camille Conte. No, it's Malarkey. Ah, oh. that say is it Alex. So Tom. That's... And then it's Jake Eastwood in April. Maybe that's a, maybe that's a premonition. You know, maybe he's going to come to the fore when Harvey gets injured. Maybe the... Does the season finish in April or May? April. No games in May. Oh, that's a shame because Gab's your man for May. Anyway, I don't need to read through all them. Who's who's December, Bruce? Give us December. I think it's James McEwen still. <laughs> he's just got a, he's just got a thing for December. Charles Vernon, Camel Conte. When's Camel Conte? Uh, October. <laughs> Play it like ten months ago. <laughs> no, 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 nobody told nobody told Jack and the gang did he? They've got a release clause. Um, uh, are we? Um, are, we, are the club going to at least sell a different sticker for a player that we can stick over Camel Conte's face? I hope, I hope Abo oh. Issa's banging him in in December still. He bloody won't be. Niall Mar <laughs> in November. Away at Woking. This, this might yeah. want shredding by this might want shredding by May, might it? This thing. Oh, oh my October. god! Camel, right, anyway. Oh, I'm I'm looking forward to when I've totally forgotten, and in October we pull over Campbell Conte. We're all going to piss ourselves laughing. <laughs> If somebody, if somebody, somebody that's cleverer than me can tell me when the last year was that's got the same days and dates as this year, then I can look back through my calendars and see if I can use one of the old ones. Right, uh, surely we can Google that, can't we? Uh, year that is the same for days of dates. Oh, well, this is IT at its finest, isn't it? Uh, calendars that repeat for 2024. So, you ready? Hang on, um, hang on, hang on. Yeah, yeah. 1996. Oh, I've got a 96 one. Hang on, hang on. Right, 96. <laughs> this is so sad. <laughs> this is content. This is content. This is Please wonderful. Discuss... Especially when, Please. especially when you're listening on a podcast. 1996. And then I've if it's not that one, mate, it yes, is. Yes, I've got 19. Uh, right. So your options are as players. Quite... So you. Oh, why have I put malarkey up already? Oh, you've told me to turn it over. That's bad luck, isn't it? <laughs> Right, in 1996, Mr. March. Oh, hang on. No, oh, that's January. Uh, where's February? After January. If they, they run the same every year, Bruce. Right. <laughs> they don't Brian, Brian Laws was your man for February. Oh, my God, that's worse. <laughs> that was the, eight, that's, that's, that's the month that he, that's the month that he smacked Bonetti, I think. 
Yeah, yeah, right. that's, it. that's him uh, throwing that's the punch the as well by the looks of it. But, what about October? Who's going to replace Camel Conte in October? This is the Neil stuff Woods that people... 100, right. 125 people are currently watching this. Waiting for this answer. <laughs> oh, 754. Oh, Mr McDermott. Seven, five. John Andrew Niles McDermott. says... Yeah, that's going to be the one. Conte. Shall we just start using hey. that one instead? Have we finished on the game yet? Can I talk some more shit? Uh, well, I'll be honest. Uh, has anyone got anything else to say about the game against Morecambe where we drew one all? No. Gav Holohan, Gav Holohan, you know, disappointed, but don't worry about it, mate. You know, you'll score a belter. Uh, that's all I can say about it. Bruce, what's the next bit you want to talk shit about? Andrew Nile says this is the calendar equivalent of train spotting. Yeah, right. Right. he's uh, he's fan- Francois Bourgeois or whatever his name is. I'm Begby. Um, not, no, not throwing I, a pipe um, glass off a land. Off a... I was watching today. I was looking for that clip of Peter Handyside that I, that I tweeted earlier when he had his shot at Wembley. I know you boys are all you too young for that, but um, John McDermott nearly scored in the 91st minute of the uh, of the auto windscreens game, and I'd completely yeah, yeah. For, and I'd completely forgotten about it. He had a great great shot. He cut cut on his right foot and and let one fly. That uh, the keeper um, turned around the post, and Wayne Burnett's golden goal would never have happened, and I've just completely erased that from from my memory bank, which is not interesting. All I remember, but... John McDermott basically just had the game plan of "I'm definitely going to score at Wembley. Fuck you all. I'm going to run through and try and." He had like three or four different shots, didn't he? Did he win man of the match as well? Did he in the first one? I shared the other day. Then a man of the match in the second one, I think, was Mark Lever. Um, I think he was man of the match. I think he uh... got him man of the match in the first one in the windscreen. Yeah. yeah, I think you're right. Look at that. And John Leslie was a good keeper in the celebrity game. Was it John Leslie or jo- Jamie Thinkston? One of the two. Former disgrace presenters. John Leslie. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's him. Abby Titmus is. Yeah, yeah. Um... <laughs> now he knows who he is. <laughs> yeah. I know who you mean. <laughs> has Henry gone now? Has, has Henry gone now? We're finished talking about the game. Yeah, Henry's gone. He's only pure professional. He doesn't want to do that. He's not in for this. He didn't sign up for this crap all those years ago with you, did he? No, he wanted he wanted proper stuff. Though, granted, um, one of the things we did do is we um, we compared our ratings on the fishy. Um, so we could do that. Bruce, what's your rating on the fishy? I don't know, mate. You got you got to go what, on it. What do I have? A, do, you, do you have a rating? Yeah, you, you do. So if you get. Yeah, you do. So if you oh, go I've to the, posted, I've only posted about two times, mate. I don't well, know, then mate, that, I think I'm... you'll be well loved. So um, how, do I fi- you... how do I find that out? That's a very good question. What positive reputation? Um, yeah. So I think if you click, if you click your name, eighty six point four. Oh, I'm only on seventy three point nine eight. That's terrible. Well, that's because because you do the same as you do. Here. You just go and call everybody a twat. Well, they are twats. All right, hang on. Uh, I'm trying to. I don't know if I've got. A, uh, am I signed in? How do I sign in? Oh, log in. There we go. Oh there my god! Go. It's like it's like telling your granddad how to do stuff, isn't it? And then when oh, no, you're it's, on the it's looking at that, it's looking at that working IT, Mike, isn't it? And yeah, then when you're on the thing, it moves. Oh, so on. everybody who's listening, I want to hear everybody else's uh, fishy. Rating. Oh, hang on. I've tried to. I've tried to. Um, oh no, I have to so on. go on oh. the fishy. Log in, and then when on the top where it says user browsed in the forum, if you click your name, it will tell you what your. I think I'm on. Uh, I think I'm on. Forum positive reputation is. I'm seventy three. The new fishy. I've got. I've got five private messages. How have you? Read them all out. Read them all out. <laughs> I've got thirty eight. Hang on, I'm just going to read. I'm just going to read these. Your podcast is shit. Why don't you fuck off? I've got 131. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> what? 131 unread messages? Oh no, not unread. No. I'm quite uh, surprised 80, no one else is doing 84, it in the chat. 84.77. Oh, yours is better than that. Mark Walt was his 68. Put Mark. Mark, you're telling people to fuck off more than I am. What's yours, Mike? Sorry. 86.52. Uh, Rob Sedgwick would pure, surely have this on an Excel sheet somewhere. Um, That's cool. Come on, everyone in the chat, you've got to add yours in as well. Don't leave Mark. Right, where's my messages? Hang on, let me look at my messages then. I've got this yeah, go on then. See who's, who are the people that have messaged you? I've got one from Yard Dog. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you where they're from. I've got one from Yard Dog. I've got one from T's Knees. 
Uh, two from Chopper, one from Son of Cod, and one from Forza Rivano. That means nothing to me. Wayne Clark is 84.77%. That is very good. Square Eyed, I'm disappointed in you. You should be on it. Ollie says, this is like GCSEs for Towns Forum. Ollie, I want you. I don't want to hear this. I want to hear your fishy reputation because we've got to understand whether or not we want to talk to you. Anybody who is under, you know, Mark's rating, Mark's is the relegation zone. You can't talk to us anymore. P Puja, uh, I, without looking, Puja has got to be the top, hasn't he? Remember that post he did with, you know, Scandinavian porn? And... <laughs> shall we shall we create a DN35 podcast one and just get, so if we all like it or do it, won't it be 100% and then we'll be winning? No, don't do that, mate. I've just, seen, I've just seen one of my messages. Everyone... One, of my, one of my messages is actually a really important one to for the Please. other account. Please help. I, 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 I'm in a cave. <laughs> I have a collection of newspapers, photos and full-length matches from the late 80s and early 90s, scrapbooks, programmes that you could borrow if you'd like. This is from last... When was it? Please send... Please send a hundred dollars to this Nigerian bank account to release. 2017. That. <laughs> He'll probably tell me in a minute he's got the Chelsea game from 1981. This is oh, this is from last November. I, I look like a right. Like a, oh bloody hell! Right, I'll be back in a minute. Where are you oh. going? <laughs> More important. Oh, well, now you know. I mean, Bruce have waited since November. <laughs> Ollie is uh, Ollie is lying to the group and saying I've absolutely never been on the fishy. He's purely outing himself as get your facts right. Um, <laughs> come on, people! I need to see more, more. You know, bravery. Look, if you post under a moniker, we won't go looking for your percentage point. We will, but um, you know, tell us what your percentage is on the fishy. I want to see what you all are. We're not allowed to say Sam's, are we? Why? He, he did this big thing about you can't say his, who, who he is. Why is it? Is it more libel stuff? Yeah, I um, think I think I think he shouldn't be on it when he's at work. <laughs> okay, Bruce. Okay, Mike. What yes. is Pooja's uh, uh, score? Oh, I'm going ninety two point six. Ah, oh. anybody else want a guess on Pooja's fishy rating? Uh, uh, Ollie is lying again, saying I'm only twenty nine. Didn't think I was allowed on there. You are Ollie. Um, uh, so it is 86.49. Have you got a higher percentage than Pooja? <laughs> I, might, I might not in a minute. My... <laughs> Daniel, I want, you've clearly been on it, so you've clearly got a login. So tell us what your percentage is. I don't want to hear your excuses. I've just been sent a YouTube link, right, to... to oh, Grimsby God. Town... <laughs> a yeah. YouTube link to... It's got that Grimsby Town mark. archive from somebody on the fishy. And the first results that's come up, body cam, woman arrested for playing with herself on the beach. What, a town game? I don't know. Is that one of the like the ads? Is that like in the cricket? You know, when they when you go abroad, like to the Caribbean, and they have those hot tubs around the edge of the pool and around the edge of the outfield and stuff? I've they do it on traffic like that. Anyway, I better close that in case Claire comes in. Um, <laughs> right. This is shit now. We, have we been chatting shit for too long? Mate, no, it's been but shit I'm, for now and 11 minutes. Yeah, has the 120 I've gone. Has the 120 gone? Have we got less than 100 now? 93, yeah. Yeah, I think we need to wrap it up. Um, One day so, we, will, we will outlast all of you. Yeah, let's do it now then. Everybody, thank you all so much for joining. We, you know, love and appreciate you all. I hope you enjoyed having the point. We'll all get together. We've got to think of ways of trying to, you know, garner the atmosphere against Forest Green uh, on Saturday. Um, and... We're, I'm not even going to play the theme tune yet. I'm going to wait to see you all leave. I yeah, want to please, see like, please leave now. Leave now. See you later. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Zone time you're wasting. Zone time you're wasting. Right, we're still at 93 at the moment. Do you think we're going to drop? They're going to be, they're going it's to be gone up. Like, it's gone up. <laughs> <laughs> 96. <laughs> Go away. Multiple devices. Bye. Yeah, Bye, multiple Andrew. Multiple devices. Uh, 87. Oh, it's going down now. You know, I think I'll, I'm going to keep it going until it's below 70. What are you right, doing now, Bruce? Not funny. This is not funny anymore, right? You should, Bruce, you I, should have some old from, I have some old telegraphs from the 70s. <laughs> Sports section. Mike's hacking it. <laughs> this is from November. Oh, God. Oh, and oh, sorry. 
the women's team as well won in the cup today, two one no, in extra time. You can't do that now if Todd won leave. We'll have to do that. Next yeah, week. that's true. Yeah. No, no more that. content. Uh, I can't piss believe off, that's Stephen. Not come on, I gotta get it. If we get it below seventy, I can turn it. I'll put the tune on. It's like last orders, right. this, isn't it? And you got homes to go to. Seventy-five. We're getting close. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. You can't stay here. No, I, this is. Oh, is it seventy? What are we doing? Below seventy. Got I think sixty-five. Six, sixty-five. And, and sixty-five. Okay. Can you actually see this? Can you guys see the no. the numbers? No. No, you no, spilled. Oh, yeah. Right, you're Joe, out. Joe <laughs> Didn't we announce a new CEO this week? <laughs> oh, oh fuck God. You, you won't get this on that other that other pod. <laughs> oh, man. Well, you know, Polly. If, if we didn't do this live, we could have just edited that in somewhere, couldn't we, conveniently? That's amazing. <laughs> so we're sat here this like twats playing a stupid game so people go, and we've not <laughs> talked about the, the fact that, that we've got We've signed a, a player from Man United. Should we talk about your fishy rating, or should we talk about quite an appointment? Uh, quite oh, hang on, it's sixty-six. We need to go. It's... Oh, hang on, sixty-five. Yeah, sixty-six. Ooh. No, no, we're off. I'll, I'll go below go. sixty-five, Bruce. No, I'm not having this. Yeah, don't, 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 don't tap out halfway through, Bruce. Come yeah, in. this is the other one that said six below sixty-five. So you know, we've got to wait. But there's, there's, there are some people that will just will just add extra devices just for fun. Yeah, like Mike. Mike, please remove it. <laughs> I, uh, I, I don't know what's going on, but Sharon said nice pair, Bruce. <laughs> I've always thought he's had a nice pair, Sharon. That's where he wrote, why is a low cut top. 67 still. One like. One like, by the way, people. You know, we do this for free for you. There we go. Like 63. Kind of... 63. The, the, yeah. the 63 yes. cushion <laughs> box. <laughs> See you later. See you nice. all later. Have a nice time. See you all next week. Uh, no fucking yes. leaving. <laughs> We're fucking gone. Open wide for some soccer. And now the shipping forecast issued by the Met Office on behalf of the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency at 1130. Go! At 1130. I don't think I've ever wanted to be on a stand more than my life around there. They're going crazy. Yeah, they got penalty here, they've been fish flying about that. There's no tomorrow. What a magnificent piece of football! A really, really good job! You can't make it straight like that!